Hello, Dr. Zakir with you. So the topic is granulomatosis is polyangiitis. The old terminology for this is vaginous granulomatosis. This condition is not that common, it is rare. And granulomatosis is polyangiitis. It's a chronic granulomatous condition. Chronic in the sense it is more than three months, it goes on for years together. Granulomatous means what happens in the cell in the circulatory system, there is so many cells. These cells, the specific cells, it gathers in the specific organs, it gathers groups together to form granuloma. So it's termed as chronic granulomatous condition. So I'll give you a whole picture before starting the topic. So what happens is the patient first he is exposed to one unknown allergen. The, that unknown allergen tries to enter the body. So what the body does is, the body, everyone, we all have a body protective mechanism, an immune system. So this will become active in it acts against the foreign material and it destroys the foreign material. That's what happens normally. And this particular patient, same thing happens, but what happens, the whole immune system or the, or the protective mechanism it becomes primed, it becomes hyperactive. So what allergen has entered, not known. Maybe some sort of bacteria, maybe any other allergen. So anyway, the whole immune system is primed and thereafter, the whole body mechanism changes. So what it produces, what it does, the immune mechanism, what it does is, it starts producing antibodies after the first attack. These antibodies, it goes against a specific cell in the blood. In the blood, you have red blood cell, white blood cell and platelets. So in the uh, white blood cell, you have so many subgroups. In that, you have something called neutrophils. So these antibodies, they go act against the neutrophils. In these neutrophils, they have granules. So they act against these granules specific specifically and it hyperactivates the neutrophils. So these antibodies are called anti-neutrophilic antibodies. So neutrophil become hyperactive, these get collected in uh, some specific organs and wherever they get collected, it destroys the organs. So whole organ gets destroyed slowly. It necrotizes the organ. So it's called as necrotizing. And the blood vessel in that particular part especially the small blood vessel and the medium sized blood vessel, they have all the inflammatory cells. That's why it's called as vasculitis. And this is commonly seen in three common sites, three sites. One is nose, second one is lung and third one being kidney. So this is the main pathology. So what makes it hyperactive? Not known. How long it, it goes on? Not known. So this is what happens in short. And like how I explained, uh, the reason is hypersensitivity and the common age group is more than 40 years. Now, coming to the clinical features, like how I mentioned before, the three main parts which are mainly involved are nose, lungs and kidney and in the nose, it destroys the nose slowly and it forms nodules inside and ulceration. So the clinical presentation will be the patient, it starts with like an upper respiratory tract infection with nose block, running nose and slowly as and when the disease progresses, usually the upper respiratory tract, uh, upper respiratory tract infection, it has to stop in a week or so. But this becomes persistent and the nasal discharge becomes blood stained and slowly as and when the disease progresses, it destroys the whole nose. Now what happens in the lungs? the same pathology and it destroys the lungs and resulting in cavity and fibrosis. So it, the complaint it starts with cough, then slowly the sputum it becomes blood stained. And the kidney, same pathology continues, uh, is there in the uh, kidney also. It starts with you have uh, blood in the urine and slowly as, the, as and when the disease progresses, it results in renal failure. So these are the main organs which are involved. Now, not only these organs, you have so many organs involved like eye, eye, ears, 
pharynx, skin, joint and central, uh, central nervous system and cardiac system also. So in every system is involved but in short the main three parts which are involved are nose, lung and kidney. Now if you come to the investigation before that let me tell you with the stages. Stage 1 means the patient is in uh, up, like symptoms which correlates with the upper respiratory tract infection. But this becomes persistent, it continues and he, the lung will be involved and he goes into stage 2. When all the other organs get involved, he goes into stage 3. These are the different stages of the condition, of the disease. Now, coming to investigation, the main investigations are, one is biopsy, the second one being anti-nuclear cytoplasmic antibody. The biopsy, it has to be a deep biopsy from the margin and from the healthy tissue and in case the biopsy becomes negative, we have to do a dill biopsy also. See what happens is, by the time we have a diagnosis of vaginous granuloma, it is almost a year or so, that is what statistics says. Because the biopsy, the repeated biopsy all comes negative, that is why. And C anka, which I have already explained, there is an antibody against the neutrophils, it is mainly seen in the active stage. So that correlates well with this. Now, biopsy has to be taken from the lung or from the kidney or from the nasal cavity. And the, uh, and the findings will be granulomatous condition that is necrotizing along with vasculitis. So this is what I have been trying to tell you that antibodies which are produced by the immune system, it acts against specific granule containing uh, enzymes called proteinase 3 and neutral serine protein and myeloproteinase also. And these are destructive in nature. So not only biopsy, we need a, a not only biopsy and C uh, and K, but if you when we do an e, um, ESR, it will be elevated. Likewise, we would like to take a CT scan, mainly CT scan and not MRI. CT scan. Now, say uh, C, uh, CT chest is also good to stage the disease, and pulmonary function test and renal function test too. So, like I have mentioned before, before we come to a diagnosis with uh, biopsy, with the help of biopsy, it becomes almost a year or so. It gets delayed because almost all the biopsy it comes negative. Now, coming to the treatment, the main treatment modality is steroids, oral steroids, and it has to be continued for a long time. That is the only way we can arrest the progress of the disease. Since it is because of a hyperactivity of the immune system. We have certain drugs like cyclophosphamide, azoptioprine, methotrexate, cyclosporine. All these may help along with the steroids. And plasma exchange immunoglobulin is of good help. Now, to add to all these drugs, the recent advance, we have mycophenolate. These are pu uh, purine synthetase inhibitors. Likewise, you have T-cell inhibitors, leflunonamide. And we have deoxyspergualin, which are immunomodulators. And the last one, tumor necrotic factor uh, antagonist, infliximab. These are the recent advance to this, which also is of help. And the trial run is going for most of it. But still of help, the most important drug we still depend on is steroid. Now, if you ask me, what are the other medications? We are mainly dealing with nasal. So, along with main therapy, we need nasal wash which has to be done 3 times daily and after that we have to lubricate the nose with the help of 25% glucose and glycerin and surgery does not have much of role except to make the patient more comfortable, we have to clean up the whole nose to make him more comfortable, that is the only thing. It is not curative, mainly it is medical treatment and this disease, it can destroy the nasal septum and there may be a hole or perforation in medical terms. So instead of doing a proper surgery for closure, the opt uh, uh, treatment modality is we have to we can close it with septal buttons. Likewise, if this patient they develop otitis media with effusion in the ear, where the uh, when it becomes chronic, the main treatment being grommet. But here we would like to avoid the surgery and go ahead and we could advise to uh, advise the patient to use uh, hearing aids. 
Likewise, these patients have high possibility of developing subglotic stenosis, where the mode of treatment will be serial dil dilation, dilation and injection, uh, intralesional uh, steroid injection. This is a treatment modality for that. So, this is how we manage vaginous granulomatosis. Thank you so much.